Hey, welcome back everyone. So in today's video, I'm going to draw a profile. So a side view of a face. This has uh, been requested lots of times and I think I've done other videos like this in the past, but it's always something that's helpful to keep revisiting. You know, we just want to constantly improve our ability to do even the, uh, the repetitive uh, tasks. And you know, you're going to need to draw a lot of different heads um, from the side. So what I'm doing is drawing just a circle here, another circle inside bit of a cross section like that and then the ear I'm gonna have the obviously the head pointing this way or hopefully it's obvious um, so I'm gonna put the ear back here I kind of use this tilted oval and then what I do here is the top of the ear will give you the brow okay and then I do like a little indent here and then the bottom of the ear will generally give you the placement of the nose I like to draw a curve and a, a circle or oval right there. It's kind of a little technique that I like to do. And then I like to immediately think about the angle down. Okay, so it uh, almost looks like they're wearing a mask or something like that. And as I go from the ear here down, uh, this is subject to change. All of this really, uh, well, not all of it. Some things are not going to change. The orientation of the brow and the nose to the ear generally doesn't change a whole lot unless somebody has like really big or really small ears and I guess that's relatively subject to change. But this information can change quite a lot based upon the type of character you're drawing. Um, so it looks a little silly right now but I promise you it'll come together. And in the head I generally extend this just a little bit. so It doesn't look too round, too spherical. And then this is going to be a female character, and so what I do here is I bring the, the back of the cranium in like this, and then a long kind of sweeping uh, series of lines, or a couple lines for the neck, something like that. And so now you can see this is pretty crude, but this is just the base information that I like to use. Obviously this doesn't really look uh, like a face yet, but it'll get there. So I'm going to bring this over. And I'll go ahead and increase the size a little bit. That way if you're working on a smaller screen, you should be able to see everything a little bit better. All right, so now, soft erase this back and work into this a bit more. So probably first things first to make it look a little bit more like a, uh, an actual character is I'll work into this side here. So the curve in the nose, obviously this is gonna vary greatly from person to person. The uh, bulbous or round part of the nose will vary a lot the distance away from the rest of the face all of these are variables right and so even though the top lip generally jets out for most people that's not an always either that people can have underbites right things like that so I uh, just kind of throw in my uh, you know perceived representation my ideal representation of who I'm trying to create but all of this uh, needs to be maneuvered around but notice that all I'm doing there is putting a curve curve back curve back out curve back so it's a back and forth right simplified it could really be uh, if you're looking at it in a more planar type way which I do suggest if you struggle with this is line out line back line out line back line out in the chin I usually do something like this so that's a very angular approach to it uh, which can help you, which can help you kind of figure it out. And then you can always chisel this stuff out or round out certain edges as you progress. Okay, so uh, that's like a lot of painters, you'll see them block in these very angular shapes. But then as they keep sculpting into their forms, they'll soften up some of the edges. Uh, not always. Sometimes it looks really cool to leave more angles. But just, uh, you know, play around with that concept. And you can kind of work back from there the shape of the lips in there I like to round this up and then I like to put this little kind of dimple onto the side it's almost like that little representation where the skin kind of bunches up right there so just like that we've got a mouth into place um, in place I should say and curvature to the jaw I like to soften this up a little bit but again you could use an angle there it just depends on the type of characters you like to draw Okay, the neck, something like that. So 
like that slope of the neck is a bit weird so I'll keep maneuvering that as I go and so now let's uh, let's put the nostril in right here a little bit higher than the lowest part of the nose and so the the hood of the nostril is equally uh, higher than this part I can't remember the terminology for this part of the anatomy but hopefully you get my meaning and then here I'm just gonna keep moving around the um, the curve to the nose I don't really like it I feel like your nose looks a bit weird so and quick tip for you this is probably a good part of the drawing where you can stop and make copies and if you're working digitally that's a lot easier but you can still do it with uh, traditionals while well, obviously in copy or scan or whatever and then try variations try the same head shape with different nose different mouth you know all of the above and really experiment because that's how you're going to learn to make uh, a variety of characters so definitely something that's worth uh worth you know trying here and there and like i mentioned before with the ear i tend to think of it kind of like a uh, tilted oval well obviously ears come in all shapes and sizes as well but it could be a little bit more of a, a wider you know area up here and then taper down into here and then also something that's pretty common is you'll see the the uh, bottom portion kind of curve more like this but you know I'll be honest I, for for my comic art I really simplify the ear and I, I go for just more like this this I even skip a, a portion of the ear anatomy which is kind of messed up but you know you get this little curve that comes in I don't like drawing that in there I don't know why but I but I do notice that a lot of artists do what I'm doing here they they change the ears a bit um, I remember hearing Jim Lee talk about it in one of his videos that you know people really don't pay too much attention to the ears he said which I thought was funny so here it is we spend all this time trying to get better ears and Here's this pro artist telling us, hey, no one's even looking. They don't look at feet either. Okay, so let's see. So now the eye, this is probably the trickiest part about a profile is where to place the eye. I know that I've always done this, or not always, I did it too much. Um, and that's too close to the front of the face. Uh, and I do remember hearing one artist say, Put it where you put it further back than you think it belongs and then put it back a little bit more and i thought that was a funny way to kind of illustrate how wrong people perceive the placement of it so i think that in the beginning you maybe use the side of the nostril or the side of the mouth and i don't think that's good enough i think it needs to go back even further now as a digital artist i do cheat a lot i'll throw a lot of this information in and there's certain things i know i can just grab it and move it back uh, but that is kind of a bad habit considering you know, I like to draw on paper too so then I kind of set myself up for a problem when I go to paper because I'm like no no I gotta gotta redraw it back where it should be um, but anyways you know it's kind of hard not to use the tools that are in front of us but for the eye I generally just do this kind of pie like shape a heavier uh, shape on the eyelashes up top you know thick and then thin them out at the point but noticeably heavier than I do at the bottom, especially in the female character. But I, I do this on the male character as well. I just draw heavier eyelashes on the female character. And then same kind of pie-like shape for the top of the, uh, the eyelid. Um, it's kind of a lazy eye. Uh, it sounds messed up, lazy eye. But it's a, it's a lazy way to draw an eye because realistically, the eye looks more like this. So you get the curve of the eye. It slopes back. It has more organic kind of bends here and even from the side you'll see a little bit of the tear duct this is kind of a bad way to illustrate it but this is closer to what a real eye would look like and then you get depth from the actual eyelid especially when you're up close you see that depth pretty evidently so that's probably more a realistic eye something like that but I don't draw realism I draw comics so for me I, I like to simplify it and this is the way that I do it. I just want you to be aware that if you're going for a more realistic version, you might change it a bit. Okay, so pupil here, iris there, drop shadow on the eye, something like that. The eyebrow, I start a little bit uh, more forward. And in fact, actually, let me go more uh, to the front of the face here. And then I go back, kind of very heavy. And then I 
point it in another direction. And what I'm picturing is really this plane change of the side of the head. So that's kind of where I align that change in direction of the eyebrow. Uh, so even though I'm not drawing this, I kind of think of this kind of shape of the face uh, as far as plane changes go. And really the side of the head more like this, that. So when I when I shadow the character, when I start coloring, I really do a lot of that. I think I think more about that. Okay, so there's that. There's the side view. Bring the the sternocleidomastoid up behind the ear like this. Probably a little bit wider here. Tapers off pretty thin there. You don't really have to draw the whole thing. You can actually just draw a little bit of it, kind of hint towards part of it. Okay, so there's our, our next stage of the work. Let's take this and actually let me copy it first. Make another revision to it. Okay, so now let's erase this back again. I'll clean this up one more time and give her some hair. Okay, so for hair, uh, I really don't want to cover the features a whole lot. Maybe a little bit of the ear. Uh, I'm just going to do a short, spiky kind of hairdo just because it's easier. This video is already getting kind of long. But uh, with hair, I generally get the direction and flow going of the hair first. So that's why you see me throwing in lines more like I'm... I want you to not be confused by the process, so I'm not drawing... The individual hairs. It looks like I am. I always have a hard time explaining this because I'm like, I'm really not doing that, but it totally looks like I am. Uh, I'm actually drawing what I consider shapes of locks of hair or, or the bulk of the hair, but I'm also really just thinking about direction and texture and almost like energy. Like you always got to think about energy when you're drawing hair. Um, Cause it's, you know, there's, there's energy in everything, but there's, there's gesture and energy in the hair. And so that's kind of what I'm thinking about here. I don't like this bottom shape right here. It looks kind of weird. Bring that in more. But if I do that, I generally get a better representation of hair. Even if it's a, you know, say she's got like this stiff kind of uh, spiky hair, right? Maybe lots of hair gel, lots of hairspray or something. It doesn't matter. I still want there to be some of that energy and flow to the way that the hair has been styled. So that's what I'm thinking about. I feel like if I do that first, it just comes out a lot easier, a lot, a lot nicer. Um, so yeah, so that's that's my process, and that applies to a lot of things, but it definitely applies to hair. I'm actually creating some lessons on clothing and fabric, and I'm gonna be putting it on my Skillshare, and it's uh, it's kind of a tough tough one to explain, but I'm getting there, and it's uh, same thing. It's kind of all about the energy, more so than even hair, but, well, I guess depending on the hairstyle. It's, it's kind of the same same series of ideas in a lot of ways. But yeah, you always got to think about that energy and flow. Okay, so now I can get in here and refine this. Actually, let me tighten up to the work a little more. I'll just kind of add more line weight. Adjust my uh, my shapes and my forms one more time as I go here. So what I think is funny about this part is small incremental changes can uh, can really do a lot so what I try to do is you know maybe move a line up or over it's not always the right choice but sometimes you find something a little bit better than what you had that's always the goal and if not then your mistake teaches you something as well right so you just look at it like hey they can't all be perfect choices I don't know if 
I like that mouth, but I'm going to roll with it. Because, uh, because, yeah, I'm not going to change it over and over again. I could, I guess. And I really like to make this top eyelash pretty heavy. I think about it as one big shape and then I sculpt into it a little bit. I also want to add some more um, eyelashes to the bottom. The eyelashes just really, uh, you know, make the eye so much more pronounced. And then you can use thinner lines uh, for the details around it. But I think you need that that variation. You know, you need that thick to uh, thick to thin variation. So yeah, something like that. Notice that I added the eyelashes where they look like they're kind of rounding away into the other side of the eye. So I think that adds a little bit more depth to that. But you can be the judge there. And then for the eyebrow, just do what I did here. But I really just use a big shape. I find it to be um, easier for one. But then also it just seems to make the character's uh, face more pronounced versus using like little thin eyebrows. I don't know. It just depends on the character. Sometimes you want those thin eyebrows as well. Okay, so there's the face. Uh, the top lip receives less light than the bottom lip because of the plane change, the, the angle. Uh, obviously, the light's got to be coming from the top for this to be evident, but... I generally draw it this way most of the time. So I'll put like a nice big glare on the bottom lip, something like that. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now for the hair, make the brush a little bit larger and I'll kind of pick through some of these shapes. Something like that. Love the ear kind of poking out right here. Just feel like the line weight needs to be beefed up a little more. Okay, and then I'm going to rotate this because it'll be easier to get these little flips of hair. Get rid of these other versions. I'm kind of throwing these as well, just so I get a little bit of that curvature on the very tips. Makes it look a little more interesting. But hopefully you can see I'm not staying exactly true to what's there. I mean, I'm definitely utilizing what was there in the undersketch to find these shapes. But, uh, you know, if an idea presents itself, if I can add a little bit more interest to the lines and to the curvatures, I'm going to do so. But, uh, but, yeah, the underdrawing is so important for capturing the energy of what we're doing here.
And at this part, I'm really just like thinking of the layers of the hair as well. So, you know, there's these overlapping forms and layers. Just kind of getting some of that in there. And my quicker stylized representation of an ear. Throw on some earrings. Now let's go with something simple. Okay, and then like I mentioned before with the neck, you don't really need to draw the entire shape of the muscle there, but I think it's good to at least hint to it. All right, so there you have it. That's my process for drawing a side view uh, or profile view of a female face. I would love to know what you think in the comments section below. And keep in mind, if you want to support the channel, uh, obviously you can subscribe. And then there's links in the description box below for some of my other content. I always appreciate the support. It helps me to keep doing what I do here. So thanks very much. Good luck with the art. And as always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.